Yo, yo, Facebook, what's going on, y'all? So, of course, I just, I'm going to wait a couple seconds so that uh, <clears throat> whoever just, you know what I'm saying, sees the laugh can be able to hop on here real fast, man. But it is so hot today in Pittsburgh. I'm sitting here hot in my car, you know what I mean? And it's just funny how the Holy Spirit worked because he makes me speak and say things that, like, I be feeling like I'm still processing myself, right? And it's just so beautiful though how God can literally bring to life any situation. It doesn't matter where you're at in your life or how boring your day might seem is going, God can breathe life into any moment, any situation, any frustrating moment, any frustrating situation. There's just always life, man, always around you. And I love that. And uh so I'm going to just tell y'all real fast and then whoever comes on here later comes on here later. But I wanted to tell y'all God correcting me. You know what I'm saying? I always come on here and I'm always spreading light, spreading love, always trying to uplift everybody. But it's so funny whenever God corrects you. So I want to tell you, man, don't be embarrassed and don't feel no type of way when God corrects you. Use God's correction to uplift you to get into more of a stable position in yourself and in God, right? So I'm going to just share with y'all what he said to me. You know, every day I'm always speaking life, not just on Facebook, really off of Facebook more than what I do on Facebook, right? What's up, Tamika? But um, he was saying to me, so yesterday I went out somewhere and somebody was trying my life a little bit, right? So I don't know if y'all know this, but I'm really from the hood. So God's done a 360 on my life. I trans God's transformed my life in so many ways. It's unbelievable. I'm still growing daily. God is still opening my mind up and expanding my thinking in so many ways, right? But yesterday I was somewhere and somebody was like trying my life and just thought that stuff was sweet. You know what I'm saying? They thought that they could just just try me. So my first response was, you know what I mean? I tried to dodge it like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they kept pushing, right? They kept on pushing. So I just clowned them. And the thing about me is like, once I finally just clown you, it's like you're clown. Like there's really nothing else to say because I don't really start something, but I'm really good at finishing it. You feel me? So what it was, was that I just, I just spoke the truth and I finished the situation off, but, and I felt justified in it because I was right, but I went to sleep. Everything was sweet. And the next day when I started spending time with God, which will be today, he starts speaking to me and immediately he told me that in the world, right? He said, quick witted responses are applaud. So whenever you know exactly what to say, whenever you know how to shots fire, pow, pow, you know how to get somebody back. He was just like, in the world, that's applaud. He was like, but in my kingdom, what's applaud is to be slow to speak and quick to listen. And he said, you know, what I would have preferred in that situation is for you to say nothing at all at first and to be slow to speak and quick to listen. And if you had to speak up and say something, you should have spoke to me first. You should have been like, God, help me to respond in a way that's beneficial to both of us. And what he showed me is that if you would have been slow to speak and quick to listen, you could have still respond and you could have still shut down what the enemy was trying to do but you could have did it with so much more integrity that didn't leave that other person feeling so low now like i said this is a new version of me because the old person i didn't care if you felt low the fact you tried me you needed to feel low but god's like that's not i'm trying to bring you up higher son and this is why i love god so much y'all because god doesn't try to condemn you he just brings you up higher, but but he does it in love. He wasn't scolding me. It's not like he is punishing me. He was just telling me like, listen, I want you to be, you're an influencer of influencers. So I need you to know how to utilize your words and to communicate more efficiently that leaves people uplifted, but corrected, not uh, corrected and pushed down or condemned, but uplifted and corrected. You have to correct people, but at the same time, uplift them so that they can go ahead and continue to walk out their walk with God in a way that still leads their life in love or still, you know, uh, allows love to lead their life. So I was sitting there and I was like, okay, God, I get that. I could have, I could have just been slow to speak. So I want to tell you, be slow to speak and quick to listen. You don't have to always respond to everything somebody says or does to you really quickly. She said, that's a word. Yes, I see y'all. It's like sometimes you just got to be patient and you got to let God formulate the right words in your heart and in your spirit. 
and you said, I don't, I still kind of don't regret it. I'm thankful for the opportunity to grow, but you don't have to regret what, what, what you said or what you did. You can actually feel so, so much more joy and happy. You have more integrity. You feel more powerful. You feel more like you have a lot more self-control because you were able to control your tongue. So, you know, God always speaks to me through Bible verses. So, the Bible verse he gave to me was this and I don't know if y'all know this but what I like to do I'm gonna give you a secret hack and this is a hack from the Holy Spirit I actually shared it today in one of the posts I said get a Bible scripture and say it several times throughout the day I said something like that if you check my Facebook I wrote it and I made a post out of it but what I'm learning to do is when I read a Bible scripture that stands out to me or God gives me one I'll read it I'll try to sing it I'll rap it I'll um teach it to somebody else like what i'm doing right now and then i just throughout the day i'll keep meditating on it so the bible verse that god gave me today and i don't mean just like put it in my spirit but actually brought it right in front of my eyes and had me read it and it was this it was proverbs 12 18 and it is um reckless words pierce like a sword but the tongue of the wise brings healing he said reckless words pierced like a sword but the word but the tongue of the wise brings healing so i made a whole little rap i'm rapping it reckless words you know what i'm saying i'm going in I, i'm not a rapper so i'm not about to rap about to rap for y'all but you know what i'm saying in my spare time I, I do a little something and i was chilling it man i was just saying it over and over and over between me and god and he was telling me the importance of words and once again if you look at my facebook i made a post like maybe three four days ago and i was just like your words are, are the most words are the most powerful thing in the world like use them wisely so god has been teaching me about how powerful words are not just words as far as manifesting and speaking healing and life but also the words of speaking death over somebody or speaking hatred or even over yourself calling yourself bad names downing yourself or even what you're thinking about yourself it's so important that you meditate on the word yes thank you amber for putting that in there god showed me this he told me that he, I actually was watching a podcast and then God added to it and started teaching me more things. But he said that your mind is like a room full of garbage, right? And he said, and this room is filled with garbage. And this garbage might be from childhood. It might be from what you watched on TV. It might be from what you say to yourself about yourself. But it's like garbage. And we read so many self-help books and we try to eliminate the garbage in our minds. And he starts showing me that when you spend time with me, talking to me when you meditate on my word what happens is i start automatically or we start automatically cleaning up that room all the garbage all the clutter all the distractions all the things that the enemy is using to take up space in your brain starts to erase and starts to be eliminated by the holy spirit carrying the garbage out of your room out of your mind and throwing it away and replacing it with words of life and god starts saying as you meditate on the word you don't have to be a bible scholar you feel me you don't have to read 10 pages you can do what i'm doing which is utilizing one bible scripture like i said today god told me reckless words pierce like a sword but the tongue of the wise brings healing and he said marcel son you are wise you have wisdom you bring healing so i need you to use your tongue to bring healing you can't be out here you know what i'm saying if you're just tuning on what's going on mom if you're just tuning in you know what i'm saying or jumping on you'll know that i said earlier yesterday i got it too and i was speaking and all this crazy stuff but god was correcting me but it's so important that when you meditate on the word of god every single lie that the enemies try to put in your mind the holy spirit starts removing it and decluttering your mind just from you simply reading the word and meditating on it what does it mean to meditate it means to wrap it sing it read it out loud say it over and over tell somebody else about it basically just pondering it and thinking about it consistently and this is what god's done to deliver me from so many different things i mean whether it was addiction whether it was an attitude problem whether it was just like me wilding out and spazzing out out of just like you know when i was younger i had a lot of anger issues i used to snap on people i used to fight i used to just like I was reckless and because I have the gift of communication, I was able to use my words to pierce people very easily. Like it's like if you need it, it's to the point my friends will come to me like, what should I say? Or people will come to me for me to give them responses to other people. And God started showing me you have a gift 
of communication, but I don't want you to use your gift to hurt my children. I need you to use your gift to uplift my children, which is how I became a transformational speaker. So I say that to say by me meditating on the word of God is how I was able to get rid of all of those little kid hurts and all those little kid toxic patterns and thought processes and issues and addictions and different stuff was because as I looked at, I didn't even try to stop doing those things. If you try to stop doing something, then you're meditating on the very thing you're trying to stop. Don't try to stop doing anything. Don't, don't try to stop eating a certain way, thinking a certain way. Don't stop trying to take a drug or smoking or coffee. Don't try to be a better mom. Don't try to stop anything. I'm going to tell you what you do. You meditate on God's word about that situation. And as you meditate on God's word about it, even healing, stop trying to be healed. Stop trying to be delivered. Stop trying to be all this stuff. Meditate on the scripture. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit in that word is going to give you the supernatural power. And you're going to look up. And all of a sudden, you're going to have the grace to be delivered. The grace to be healed. The grace to be in that supernatural place that you're desiring to be. God told me. He said, don't ever think about what you're trying to stop doing. Think about what you're trying to start doing. And I'm once again, I made another post. If you if you follow my Facebook, I'm always posting everything the Holy Spirit drops in my spirit. I just be dropping it, dropping it, dropping it. And there's not a lot of context behind it because I'm not speaking it, but I'm writing it. But once again, he said, and I put uh, this, it said, never speak the problem, only the solution. And then I put uh, Yeshua, Yeshua, which is Jesus. And I said that because Jesus was speaking to me saying, son, don't start complaining about the problem. Put your mind on the solution. And in the word of God, the reason why I love the Bible so much is because every single solution to every problem is literally in the Bible. It's like God knew every single problem any human can ever have while they existed on planet Earth. And he put the answer and the solution in the word. But he says you have to look for it like treasure. A lot of times you don't know what to do because you don't look for the for the solution like treasure. But if I told you the Bible has a code where you can have a billion dollars, just go in there and read it. And it's going to tell you how to make a billion dollars. People will be in there and be tweaking and be trying to find it. But they don't realize that money fades away. Money is only temporary. Money is only a temporary commodity of energy that we use on this planet Earth to be able to gain leverage over certain things and give us different uh, economy brackets and different, uh, I'll say, benefits and pleasures while we're on the Earth. But the word of God has the pleasures and it gives you the leverage into the spiritual realm that will take you into eternity out of this world and into the ages to come. So you cannot get caught up with money. You cannot get caught up with just business and you cannot get caught up with temporal things because they will fade away. Even the very body you're living in is fading away. I don't care if you're 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. At the end of the day, you only got up to, I'll say, 100. And that's, a, that's if you have a nice long life. But the Bible says you only really need to live 70 years in order to can be considered of having a good long life so you're already on your way to heaven like or on your way to hell depending on your heart oh my god let me give you this revelation i i love just giving this revelation what's up chrissy what's up and i love giving this revelation so about heaven and hell god was like um i don't send people to heaven and hell right he said that I'm just a judge and basically I just I don't even judge the situation. Hold up, let me get it right, Holy Spirit. Help me out. He said that when a person dies, right? They're oh yeah, thank you. Okay, he said that your body that you live in, right? It's what gives you legal access to planet Earth. Right now, the only reason why you're here is because you have a body and you're on planet Earth. That's what gives you the ability to operate. He said, but whenever your body dies, you then will enter the kingdom in which you belong. So he said, I'm not sending you to heaven and hell. When you die, you'll just go to the kingdom you belong in, right? And this is what's so beautiful about Jesus. The kingdom isn't, you don't belong to a certain kingdom based off of how much good you did or how much bad you did. You go to a certain kingdom based off of who you accept and what you allow. And this is the reason why you have to accept Jesus. And you know what I mean? That's like, it's not kindergarten teachings, but you already know you got to accept Jesus to go to heaven. But besides that, God was showing me like you can't get so caught up with temporal things. I know y'all can see that I'm always striving for success. I'm always going to a meeting, going to a speaking engagement, doing life coach sessions, going into schools, uh, shooting shows for my show, The Freedom Experience. I'm always 
doing something that represents my purpose, that represents the reason why I'm on earth. And God was like, that's all good, son. So this word is for you too. Whatever you're doing for success, that's all good. But don't get so caught up in that, that you lose focus of the word and you lose focus of the spiritual reason why you're on earth, right? So I try to tie in that with everything I'm doing, whether it's business, school, family, fun. I'm always thinking like, what can I do? What value can I add? That's an eternal value. That's not a temporal value. And that blesses me. That's what brings me my most joy to be able to add eternal value to situations. It doesn't matter what it is. It's always purpose for me. But um, I wanted to tell you, OK, yeah, there's something else I want to tell you. The Holy Spirit is doing to me. God is really stirring up my confidence. So if you're dealing with the issues, focus on the solution. Yeah, focus on the solution. Exactly. Sorry, I'm going a thousand places because the Holy Spirit's moving. But yeah, don't try to be set free from anything. Focus on the word and the word will bring the solution and will transform you. But there's another thing I wanted to speak about. The Holy Spirit is stirring me up in my confidence. I mean, I thought I was pretty confident before. Uh, but like I said, the Holy Spirit is waking me up to my confidence. So I want to share with y'all some tips on how to gain more confidence. He start having me go through, what's your purpose? You know what I mean? Uh, what's your identity? What's your purpose? And then what are your gifts? So I'm going to share this with y'all. This is kind of personal, but I feel like if this can help somebody, then I'll share it. So it's like, what? what is your identity? Your identity is a child of God, right? You are... So solely created to be a receiver of God's love. You're ultimately created to just be able to receive God's love for now all the way into eternity. So it doesn't matter what you're dealing with on earth. It'll all be worth it once you get to eternity. So he was telling me that's just who you are. Your identity is my child. Your identity is uh, made in my image. You're a God-like being. You're made in my image and you're here to receive my love. That's foundational, period. So it doesn't matter nothing, good, bad, God reigns on the just and the unjust. You're here to receive my love. Second to that is you are here for a purpose. So when I thought about what's my purpose then God, and I started asking the Holy Spirit, show me my purpose. What am I here to do? I know I'm a speaker. I know I do all this stuff, but what is like the purpose of all of that, right? He said, you're here. I always tell people I'm here to help other people find freedom. That's what I base my whole life off of, right? But he said, you are here to love, to honor, to love people, to honor people, to uplift them, and then to connect them back to me. So the reason why God has me on earth right now is to love people, to honor people, to lift them up and connect them back to God. I'm going to do that on a international level. I'm already doing it on an international level, but I mean on like a huge level where I'm going to train other people on how to do that, right? But this is just my purpose. That might not be your purpose. Your purpose could be to make people smile, make people laugh. It could be, you know, to heal people through your words of love, through your compassion. Your your uh, purpose could be to provide for people, to give to people, to encourage people. There's so many different purposes in the world. Never compare your purpose with somebody else's. Okay. But I'm like, all right, God, so I know that that's what my purpose is, right? He said, yeah, but now, son, it was like, this was like the Holy Spirit. If I really got deep with y'all, okay, so I'm going to just be, <laughs> I don't know how, I'm going to be transparent, but I'll be on here running my mouth because I communicate. So I was like, God, I want to go to therapy again. And it's not that I'm going through nothing crazy, but I just love dialogue. I love somebody giving me their perspective that they're, they're for me. I don't like people trying to like shoot me down but i like for somebody to be there that can help me and talk with me and stuff like that and that's hard for me to find on people because i'm always being counseled by the holy spirit so anything that they say it's just like the holy spirit it's just whatever but i was like i'm looking for a counselor so i started thinking about a counselor a mentor a therapist and i looked and i couldn't find it i'm like okay and then once again, the God gave me a word back to the word. I'm listening. If you're just tuning in, you have to watch this from the beginning. God took me back to the word. Right. And in the word, there's a Bible verse that says your testimonies. It says uh, uh, you are my delight, your testimonies. And uh, let me think. What is it? Holy Spirit. It says your testimonies is my counselor. It said like you are my delight and your testimonies are my counselor is my counselor. Right. So how like God, the Holy Spirit highlighted that Bible verse. And he said, testimonies or your counselor. If you know me, I have a show called The Freedom Experience. And literally, it is people's testimonies. And I started realizing God has had me uh, 
be a student. God has made me a student of testimonies and of life since I was a little kid. So I'm always learning from other people's testimonies. So he said, the testimonies of other people is literally your counselor. And it's me through highlighting and showcasing. So never overlook somebody's testimony. Always think about what you can learn from it. Like even this testimony right now, think about how you can learn from it. So I was like, okay, after that, God started hitting me with so many testimonies that literally was counseling me better than a counselor, right? And that's what took me to what I was just explaining to y'all about my purpose and then about, uh, you know, why I'm here to my purpose. The next step after that, the next day, the Holy Spirit revealed to me gifts. And he said, I want you to make a list of what you feel like all your gifts are. I made a long list. So, and it was more things that I even thought I was gifted in, but I'm gifted in a lot of areas. And it's not even a brag or nothing, but to say like, I was feeling like, wow, I'm not even using these gifts. I'm gifting a lot of stuff. I'm not going to go over the list, but it's a long list. And I want to tell you, make a list, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal your purpose to you, and then ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you your gifts. Make a list of the gifts that you offer. It doesn't matter how young, how old, how much you feel like you don't have nothing to offer. Those are all lies from the the, uh, the enemy, the devil. And like I said, as you meditate on God's word, who will move the clutter. But God wants you to get more confident in who you are. But you only get more confident in knowing your purpose and then knowing your gifts because that's what you offer to the world. And through you knowing this, it brings you confidence. It brings you assurance as far as who you are. So I say all of this to you to say... God will correct you because I'm about to jump off here. So I want to go summarize what I said. God will correct you, right? In whatever area you're dealing with, God will correct you. Embrace the correction, right? Because he's always lifting you up higher. The second thing is God will show you exactly what to do whenever you're in a situation and you can't come out of it. There's a Bible verse that says, uh, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, teaches me not that one. Um, I have perfect knowledge and wisdom of every situation for I have the wisdom and the knowledge of God that's formed within me. There's a Bible verse or whatever for every single problem that you might face. There's a Bible verse for it. But the Holy Spirit wants to stir you up in your confidence and he ultimately wants to prepare you. We're almost done with this year, y'all. Can y'all believe it's already August? It's already August. God is doing so many things. Let the Lord use. Let the Lord God use you. Amen. Amen. And God is saying, I'm trying to prepare you, but I need you to be more confident. I need you to know who you are. I need you to be willing to be corrected. I need you to ultimately not just be looking out for you. A lot of people are stuck and they're like, God, I want to get higher. But God is saying, you're only looking out for you. I need you to be higher to look out for other people. So, man, I wasn't even intending on saying all of this to you. I am hot sitting in my car about to go do some stuff. But the Holy Spirit was like, so I need you to jump on live. I need you to keep it real with the people and I need you to speak life over them because like I told you, reckless words pierce the soul, but the tongue of the wise brings wisdom. And he said that you're wise, son. You got to bring wisdom. Speak life into my children. Uplift my kids. Tell them that I love them. Tell them that I am for them. Tell them that I will help them. The Holy Spirit is your counselor. Even if you can't find it, I'm not telling you to stop going to therapy, but even if you're not in therapy, the Holy Spirit will counsel you. He will lead you to therapy if that's where you're supposed to go, or he will just counsel you himself. But I just want to pray for you. Father God, I thank you for every single person who will see this live, God. I pray and I ask, God, that you would teach them about you. I ask that, Lord, you would make them become curious and interested in you as a person, not you as in just like a, a provider for them and a healer for them or a teacher for them. But also, Lord, just as a person, like you have your things that you like, you dislike, you, you have a sense of humor, you laugh, you talk, you correct, you love, you counsel. And you do so many things, Father. So I pray that you would stir up your children's hearts to cause them to want to know you as a father. And you also, Jesus, just as a person and Holy Spirit, I pray that the same counsel, the same wisdom, the same patience that you have with me, you would implement that, Lord, into your children and you would open their eyes and enlighten their understanding so that they might see who they really are, God, that they might discern, Father, who they were created to be, that they might discern, Father, that the power that they possess there, that you will use them, Father, to do great and mighty exploits in this world, Lord, before their time of uh before their time expires, God, before their time of destination of going into heaven, God, that you would use them mightily, Lord, on the earth, 
Do not let their life be in vain, Holy Spirit, but do everything in your might. And angels, I release you to host of heaven. I release you to to assist my father and to assist my brothers and my sisters and whatever it is they're trying to accomplish, whatever they need help them. I release you by the billions to go into all the all the earth and to cover this whole entire planet and to be able to help the children of God to rise up and get into their manifested position as a son and a daughter to be able to fulfill their mission, fulfill their purpose and to do the assignment that God's placed over their life before they leave this earth. Let it be with ease. Let it be with love. Let it be with joy, with freedom, with deliverance, with power, with might. Father God, surround them with the right people. Bring them a great support system, whether that's friends, family, a husband, a wife, a church, Father God, um, a counselor, a therapist, a leader, a mentor, a life coach, whoever it is that I pray that you would surround my, my brothers and sisters, Lord, with exactly who they need, Father, to get them to this next level. And Dad, I thank you so much for your mercy, your kindness, your goodness and thank you dad that you got this in the bag this world belongs to you there's no point of tripping about nothing we just trust you we love you we cast all of our cares into your hands dad and we just honor you on this day and we thank you father god because this is the day the lord has made so we'll rejoice and be glad in it in jesus name we pray amen amen man i love the holy spirit he be doing what i can't do he be saying what I can't say. He be showing me things that I don't see. The Holy Spirit is the man. If you don't know him, ask him. Ask about him and ask him to reveal himself to you. But, all right, I'm done sweating and sitting here and talking and blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? But I love y'all. Have a blessed day. And share this live. If you're watching it, don't just sit on this, this, this gym and this wisdom. Share the live, man. Let the people around the world be able to see it because this is only the beginning. The best is yet to come. Just know the best, the best years of your life. And I don't care if you're 100 years old, you're going to live for eternity. But this is what I want to say. The best is yet to come. Do not stop believing God. Do not give up on what God promised you. Do not get discouraged in your spirit. Know that the best is yet to come. God is faithful. He loves you. He is with you. And he's fighting for you. All right, y'all. Peace out.